30 seconds. That's going to be a little bit extra. What? 10 seconds, guys. Stand by. This is recorded in a three, two, one. Next on the news at 10, the investigation continues tonight after a mall shooting that leaves two people injured. Plus, find out why some students want to rename a university building. And a new business is headed to District 5. And we're looking at mild temperatures for the day today with some cloudy skies and a few rain showers. More rain is on the way in the forecast. All the details on the workweek forecast coming up in weather. Stick around. WVUA 23 News at 10 is coming right up. I was told. Two, one. Roll it. This is WBUA 23 News The building is up, the walls are painted, and the beds are Semi made. The Salvation animation. Army is ready to accept people. Well, we're glad to be with you tonight. I'm Jabari Pruitt. In tonight's top story, the new facility hey, will open tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's located on the corner of Greensboro Stop Avenue. Me. The old shelter was destroyed in the April 27th tornado. The $5.8 million shelter will feature 73 beds throughout four wings. The wings are for families, women, men, and veterans. He's rolling ticket. Uh, I think they're going to appreciate it. I think, I think they're going to feel safe. To open to a weather in some shelters, I know the homeless are not feel safe, but I think they're going to feel safe. Uh, I think they're going to feel well taken care of. Michael. The center also needs framed inspirational open. pictures to decorate the walls. If you would like to donate, you can call 205-553-1606. And turning our attention now to the weather, meteorologist Peter Crank is in with the first look at that forecast. Peter, good evening. Good evening, Jabari. We've seen Here's warm up. conditions again today. We've seen a few rain showers out there. However, right. most of us have stayed dry throughout the day today. But as we go into the upcoming work, we're going to be dealing with more rain showers moving in, as well as the potential right, for some stronger storms later Texas. on work week. You can see that rain mainly down toward Texas and Louisiana, but all of this, along with that line through Tennessee and Arkansas, has been making its way toward us as we go through the overnight hours tonight Jabari and into the day tomorrow. Box. So make sure you have that jacket so. ready and the umbrella as well. Yeah, Temperatures will be a little bit cooler as well. Highs only into the lower 60s. Jabari? All right, Peter, thank you. A new business could come to Alberta. WBUA 23's Priscilla Strada joins us Live with more Priscilla. Michael. Jabari, District 5 Councilman Kip Tyner says he hopes this business helps with the recovery of Alberta. Tyner Plus, the community that. soup bowl is in need of volunteers. One city councilman is stepping up the plate. He's up. Tuscaloosa's this train station may have a new home. The city has been working diligently for Kip. some time now to make the Lee Land Shopping Center the new train station. Um, I think it will be a, uh, just a game changer for uh, the face of Alberta. Um, so I know there's still some details to work out, and, and I know the this final is decision seconds will actually come from the Amtrak itself, but I can guarantee you we welcome them uh, for sure. Tyner also says if Amtrak declines, the city could lose Amtrak services then we'll take, altogether. Uh, and the Tuscaloosa Community yeah, Soup Bowl could use some volunteers. District 2 City Councilman Harrison Taylor approached the mayor and other council members to give up their time to volunteer and help the hungry. I think, you know, it's just an opportunity to give back. Uh, this city has been so blessed and we want to help those who are down and give them a hand up. Let them know that we're down with them. And she's up. Councilman Harrison Taylor the said they want to start volunteering in April or May and volunteer at least twice a year. And if you would like to volunteer, just call 752-2421. Live tonight, I'm Priscilla Estrada, WBUA 23 News. All right, Priscilla, thank you. Well, two people are shot at the Western Hills Mall in Birmingham after an altercation. The injuries were not life-threatening. The suspect is still on the run tonight. Where We're it? here at home, a stop the, violin, uh, the stop the Violence youth rally was held today in Tuscaloosa. It was at Green medicine? Park. So yes, far yes. this year, there have been Kidding. four homicides in Tuscaloosa, three in District 7. Organizers say they chose this area to have the rally because they want a new school and more businesses in the area. Oh, no, that's okay. He's up. And this is the first year for this event. Roll it. 
Now to the race of the White House. Two Democrat presidential hopefuls are gearing up for their next guys. contest. South Carolina is Federica Whitfield. He's a, I, he's a, I, now it's the Democrats' turn oh, in South Carolina. And among voters we talked to leading up to the GOP primary vote Vegas here, the complications of choosing among the Republican candidates as varied as the candidates themselves. I'm definitely uh, excited and involved in watching everything going on with the primary. Mm. So you've made a decision about who you vote for? Uh, no, not yet. Definitely not strong. I want to protect you know, the institution of traditional left. marriage. Um, you know, those are at the top of my list. Of course, we want a strong economy and defense, of course. Democrats here anxious to welcome back Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, fresh off the Nevada caucuses. This week's Democratic town hall on CNN at the University of South Carolina in Columbia, sure to be intense. Voters we met up with on their picks and why. I'm on the fence still, um, but I'll probably vote for Bernie Sanders. Why? Um, I think that I'm on the fence, but I know exactly who I'm voting for. Been one of the main <laughs> One minute in package, guys. What's been at my heart for a long time, and that's sort of what I think of as the linchpin of his momentum. When the polling stations open for the Democratic primaries on Saturday, this trio of Sanders supporters are banking on a Clinton upset. We're out here kind of in support of Bernie Sanders and kind of taking a stand against Donald Trump. I'm, I'm a big fan of immigration, and I think everybody should support immigrants and should welcome Syrian refugees and everybody else in because seconds. I think that that's the right thing to do. Bernie cares about bringing the middle class back, he cares about women, he cares about students, and it's all of these groups that no one's really paid attention to or really cared about before. This couple is back in Clinton in the primary, even if it means upsetting family traditions seconds. in this mostly conservative Palmetto state. I'm definitely uh, support Hillary. But your family's Republican. My family is Republican. So has that created any consternation, yeah. any interesting family dinner Trump dialogues, family gathering dialogues? We, we tend so, uh, to stray away from uh, political board. talk there, okay. those kind of uh, dinners and that sort of thing. <laughs> we did confirm that they were not Trump supporters. The bar is up. Now that was Federico Whitfield reporting that Alabama's primary is March 1st, which is also Super Tuesday. In other news tonight, a petition to honor Harper Lee has started. Students are signing an online a petition to rename Morgan Hall to Lee Hall. It's currently named after a former KKK leader. Now, students believe the name shows diversity on campus. He's going. Take it. I feel like it really this is 18 seconds out to is like if the people or the campus he had to be able to continue from the current team. was offending people or strives of the offensive background and change it to a Ten neutral seconds. name. Will, I guess it will help correlate change to the people or the, the campus. Yeah. Now, if you want to sign the petition, you can go to change.org and search for Morgan Hall. In honor of Black History Month, we are shining the spotlight on a unique museum right here in Tuscaloosa. WVUA 23 News anchor Tamika Alexander has more. Jabari, the Murphy African American Museum is one of four historical landmarks here in Tuscaloosa. So let me take you inside this local treasure. The Murphy African American Museum be, uh, sits on the corner of Paul Bryant Drive 14. in Tuscaloosa. This historical mm -hmm. home was built in 1923 Alfred, with materials uh, from Jones the old Capitol building. And during that time, this was considered the area for affluent blacks. The museum started in 1985 with Ms. Ruthie Pitts and the uh, first African Baptist members, and they wanted to have a historical place in Tuscaloosa. They purchased a house, and they started storing black history items here. The museum is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and features artifacts that describe life uh, during the 1920s and beyond. We have a lot of items about slavery. And we have items about yeah, is, uh, all types of things on black history here in Tuscaloosa through the years. And we try to highlight the uh, accomplishments of a lot of black people here in Tuscaloosa and Alabama. And there are many well-known trailblazers that once called Tuscaloosa home, including educator Benjamin Barnes, Grammy-winning singer Dinah Washington and civil rights activist Reverend T.Y. Rogers. Jones tells us the museum receives its funding from donations and the city of Tuscaloosa. We really need a lot of volunteers. We have a lot of our tours and we need people who want to learn about Tuscaloosa history and help us volunteer. Jones says they see Stand more out-of-town visitors seconds. at the museum. It is open Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Reporting for WBUA 23 News, I'm Tamika Alexander.
And Friendship yeah, Missionary no Baptist nice. Church held a Black <laughs> History celebration today. Love the it. annual celebration consisted of a dinner with the congregation as well as the community. The church also celebrated the pastor's birthday. Now, members say this allows them to come together as one. It's always a unifying effort when we try to have celebrations, group celebrations, and everybody can come and celebrate. Uh, we try to do that with meals or uh, other inspirational uh, works that we invite people to. It is a great joy for the church to be able to celebrate with me another milestone, another blessing of the Lord. I'm thankful for people that love God and also love their pastor. Now, for more information on the church's upcoming events, just go to Friendship Tuscaloosa. For the third year in a row, Bethel Baptist Church put on another successful Pure Praise concert. This year, they chose to honor a former Pure Praise choir member who died of cancer back in October. Pastor Matthew Wilson says they wanted to show people that music can be therapy and bring people together. We feel that music is an opportunity to share the gospel the message of Jesus and Christ, and, and, and it's and also an opportunity for guys. us to get together with people from Stay all down. over the Tuscaloosa and surrounding counties. My God. Now they hope to reach even Stay more people music. in the community. Roll it, music. What's well, still to come on the news at 10? Yep. Find out how Cam Newton is spending his off-season, and an Alabama Stay mother door. is making her mark Stay on nice grocery control. stores. So stick around. We are coming right back. Three, two, one, and we out. Stairs. Oh, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Uh, no, I wanted uh, just Peter to walk up to two, one. The bar's up. An Alabama mother is changing the way families <laughs> with disability, children with disabilities are shopping. Yeah, WUA 23, Sheila O'Connor explains. Hands up. Drew Ann Long is the mother of 15 year old Caroline Long, who is the inspiration behind Caroline's cart. Take it out. Caroline suffers from Rett syndrome, which leaves her unable to walk or speak. But her family says what? that doesn't change the way she lives her yeah, life. Uh, she goes to school every day. She's very happy and yeah, social. She's she certainly knows what's going on. And we just love her to death. Long came up with the idea for Mitchell Caroline's cart after her daughter could no longer fit in the generic shopping cart seat. She searched for special needs shopping carts, but came up short. I started doing research, and when I did my research, I realized there was never a special needs shopping cart. Target is the biggest retailer to pick up Caroline's carts. Our guests are excited that this is something that can make their shopping easier. Um, it's been completely positive feedback, and we're just really excited that we can offer it here. Long says she receives pictures from all over the world on Facebook, and that is what keeps her going families are sending me pictures looking. thanking me saying you know for the oh, first time in years i'm shopping we're shopping as a family so that has been um a huge source of support the shopping cart has received a lot of positive feedback nationwide changing the way families are shopping for wvua 23 news i'm sheila o'connor and Cam Newton has found a new hobby outside football. He's a spokesman for the campaign that's promoting fruits and vegetables. His campaign kicked off on January 1st. And if you're looking for a fun way to exercise and enjoy a dozen donuts at the same time, the annual Krispy Kreme Challenge is this Saturday. The race will start at 10 a.m. at Government Plaza in downtown Tuscaloosa. And that right there, I was there last year, and I, and I don't see how they do it. The donuts and the running. Absolutely. I say I can probably run. The question is, I don't know if I can down those donuts at the same time as I can't keep do going. It. You can do both of them separately. I'll be all for that right. one. But, uh, yeah. So we are looking at pretty nice weather for that race on Saturday, but there is rain and storms before then. All those details and weather. Stick around. We'll be right back. Three, two, one, and we out. Weather open. Welcome back. To the end of the weekend, we've had fairly nice conditions across the area. Temperatures in the lower 70s this afternoon with a few light rain showers out there. But overall, we are dealing with very comfortable conditions at this hour. And for tomorrow, though, <coughs> you're going to want to make sure you have that umbrella with you. We're looking at rain showers All throughout right, the day to tomorrow and, and cooler temperatures as and well. Light and northerly <laughs> breeze will keep us a little bit cooler with yeah, high temperatures in those lower 60s like across the area. So not exceptionally cold, but still cooler than where we have been today. Radar right now shows a few very light showers across northern Alabama from Gadsden over to Hamilton back into Mississippi. But overall here in Tuscaloosa, we are...
Christ staying dry as well as in Birmingham and Anniston. But that will change as we go through the overnight hours tonight and into the day tomorrow. What won't change too much is our lower temperatures. We're sitting at 62 right now, 65 over in Birmingham and 62 up in Coleman. We're only going to drop another 5 to 7 degrees across the area. So we're going to stay very mild overnight tonight and into the early morning hours tomorrow. But again, we're not going to warm much tomorrow afternoon thanks to this cold front and the rain that will make its way across the state. This cold front will sag south but then quickly wash out before Thank moving so back much. to the north during the day on Tuesday. And yeah. that's where we're going to see the better chances for showers and thunderstorms. Monday should be rainy, but that break during the morning hours on Tuesday will bring us the potential for warmer air, and that could spark some strong to severe storms. Off to our west, it's the main apple. threat for showers and thunderstorms. It'll move in as we go into the night hours on Tuesday into Wednesday and bring with it that cold front that will bring cooler air into the area as we go later into Wednesday. Wednesday morning, we start to see the rain begin to move on out, and by Wednesday night, we'll see the sky to begin to clear, allowing us to cool down as we go into Thursday morning. We are dealing with that potential for some severe weather, and we will update you as anything changes with that. But for now, we're looking at general thunderstorms across Tuesday northern night, Alabama, a limited threat for severe weather through Birmingham, and a better radio, threat as you go from Tuscaloosa down uh, to, toward <coughs> Demopolis, as well as Clanton and Montgomery, in the threat for some uh, elevated risk for severe storms. This does include the potential for tornadoes, as well as damaging wind and hail across the area. And of course, we will keep you up to date as we get closer to the event on Tuesday evening. Tonight, no severe weather. 57, warm and cloudy with a few scattered showers out there, but overall, generally light hey, this might be in the last nature. Day of the weather for tomorrow, yeah, a bit heavier be rain coverage. 63 for that high temperature, cloudy with some showers across the area. As we head into the beginning portions of the work week, we do deal with that rain across the area. Right, Stormy no, conditions right. for us Tuesday, especially That's Tuesday clear. night into early Wednesday Stand morning. That's where we'll see that God, potential for strong to severe weather. will be Tuesday afternoon onward. And as we go into Wednesday, we'll see the rain begin to clear out as we go into the evening hours. Temperatures, though, are cooler. High of 56 there on Wednesday. The rest of the work week looks to be dry heading into next weekend as well. Temperatures will be in the mid-50s on Thursday, warming up to the lower 60s by the weekend. Mike Barry. All right, Peter, thank you. Well, congratulations to Paige Weinstein. She is the 2016 Miss University of Alabama. Now, Paige is from Pittsburgh, Pittsylvania. Now, she was also from Pennsylvania's 2015 Outstanding Team. So congratulations to her. Well, coming up in sports, Alabama basketball may have lost yesterday, but head coach Avery Johnson says he embraces the role of the underdog. Stick around sports is next. Three, two, one, and we out. Four. Three, stand by on the open. Two, one, roll the open. Hey everybody, I'm Zach Tiger. The opening series of the baseball season came to a close today as the Alabama Crimson Tide hosted Maryland for game three. Fans and players alike hoping for a series win at the newly renovated Sewell Thomas Stadium. Bottom of the third, one out. And Chandler Avan lines one to left field. Chance Vincent comes all the way around from second to score, and Bama up 1-0 early. A oh, few batters later like in the third, Cody Henry up the middle, off the glove up, of the so second sorry. baseman, and Avan comes around from second to score, so Bama's up yeah. to 2-0. Fast forward to the eighth now. Runners on second and third, and Connor Short finds a gap that he likes, lines one to left center field. That clears the bases. Bama up 5-1. to one. Just bring it back. And then Thomas Burroughs, end for the right, save. Cool. He gets the pop six. fly. It's not a the first beach. series win of the season is in the books for the tie. And after the game, Mitch Gaspar said he was I'll pleased the with the sucks. results. He's up. Really, the environment for short, everyone was so different this shot. weekend uh, from what it had been down in the past that uh, yeah, I think we really have an opportunity right now to capture the momentum. And... Uh, our team has to the shown screen, that we got sports music. just the energy from the crowd really helps you. And uh, so we got to build on what we started here this weekend. Oh, yeah, I thought, it, you know, for me personally, this Ten was seconds. a really big game today because you want to get off and get that series. And I think it builds confidence within your team, but Thank also you, continues to build interest in your program with your fan base. Hey, Michael. And on the other diamond, the Alabama softball team took care of business at the Panther and Invitational back, this weekend in Atlanta. Yesterday, they defeated Mercer 7 to nothing in Game 1 as Alexis Osorio earned a complete game no-hitter. They followed that up with a 9 to nothing six-inning win over Georgia State. Then today, they wrapped things up with a 10-5 victory over Maryland. That win was Coach Murphy's 900th victory with Alabama. 
Congratulations to Coach Murphy. The Tide returns to Tuscaloosa Wednesday as they host Troy. After Alabama fell to Mississippi State yesterday, the sudden increase of tournament Sound talks surrounding yes. Avery Johnson and his team started to quiet down. But that's just how Coach wants it as he and his team turn their focus to Kentucky. He's going. When, when we were on the this outside looking in, we have a certain focus. Uh, when people talking about we've supposedly Avery. already <laughs> arrived, that, that's a problem. So hopefully now all that talking be behind us. Um, we got a few games left in, in, in conference play, but at the same time, the biggest one is on Tuesday. Where the fortunate thing about Tuesday, we will be an overwhelming underdog. Hopefully, like, <laughs> trip, I mean, a hundred point seconds. underdog. Okay? This man's funny. So I can get back to seeing the team and the focus that I need to see. He's rolling, Michael. And on the tennis court, the Alabama women hosting Northwestern today. The match got moved indoors during practice due to some light rain. But the ladies, they still took care of business, beating Northwestern 5-2. We'll in, in doubles play, Aaron Routliff and, and Andy Danielle won the point in a tiebreaker. And in singles play, Alabama would win the final three sets with the quenching point coming from junior Danielle Spielman. Spielman says this win is huge after three straight losses. Oh, we, oh my bad, missed it. Take the name. Um, I mean, we've played them our very first match this season, and we actually got beat really badly by them. So being able to recover and just dominate them today, and after kind of the tough losses we've had, it is a huge confidence booster for all of us, I think. And it just shows that we do the right work, and we have to wait for our chances to come. And a match like that is definitely what we needed. She's up. Michael. And NASCAR is back. The Great American Race was on today in sunny Daytona, Florida. Final lap. That's Denny Hamlin in the FedEx car. He slides in and is neck and neck with Martin Truex Jr. after passing Matt Kenseth. And here down the final stretch. Too close to call. Here it is in slow motion. Denny Hamlin beats out Martin Truex Jr. Okay, by inches. Denny Hamlin is the Daytona 500 winner after the race. Hamlin said this is a new high for his career. While Truex said he'll have a hard time forgetting this loss. Is up. It's the pinnacle of my career for sure. Uh, you know, I haven't talks uh, got a championship March, yet, yet the second, and uh, so this is obviously the biggest, biggest win for myself, the which we could have won, obviously. But if I did not want to win. Go back to just gonna have to watch that on the highlight reel for the rest seconds. of my career, I suppose. Today was a great day, you know. Um, we Good all want to win. This is competition, you know. I wouldn't. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to win. Things up. And a quick note before we had to break, Alabama Gymnastics returned home after winning a quad game yeah, hosted by Penn State. They finished with a score of 197.300. That topped Denver, Penn State, and Cornell. The Tide will face Georgia this upcoming Friday at Coleman Coliseum. That's a look at sports. We'll be right back. 3, 2, 1, and we out. 2, 1, they're up. And we're back here. Of course, we got a couple months before NASCAR. Well, NASCAR started a couple months before Talladega. Okay, that's I'm what looking forward to that. Talladega is always a fun one. I'm actually, actually excited. I get to right, actually we'll do some drag racing in March. So I'm excited. excited. Maybe I'll have a photo finish, just like Denny Hamlin did today. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and before we go, let's get a quick check of the forecast. Well, make sure you grab the umbrella if you're headed out early tomorrow, or really any day uh, for any part of the day on Monday. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler. Highs in the lower 60s Boy, with those rain showers out right, there. But as we go into Tuesday, stand we're going to be looking music. for the potential for some strong to severe storms. So, again, keep an eye with us. We'll keep you updated with that and an cool air for the rest of the night. All right, All right people, thank three, you. But well, that's it for us tonight. Be sure to join us back here tomorrow at 5 o'clock with Lynn and then at 6 with Philip. Have a great week. Here we go.